Samson Mao, who recently exited his position as chief strategy officer at Blockstream, has started Jan 3 with $21 million in funding at a $100 million valuation. And earlier, I had a chance to speak to Samson at the Bitcoin 22 conference in Miami about how Jan 3 plans to spread nation state Bitcoin adoption initiatives. Have a listen. So you've got some big news with Jan 3. Tell me all about what Jan 3 is about. Well, Jan 3 has a very broad mandate. Our goal is to accelerate hyper-Bitcoinization, and that can take a number of forms. We could be operating a wallet, so we will be operating the Aqua Bitcoin and Liquid Wallet, um, a NFT platform built on Liquid, maybe helping nation states build traditional software infrastructure projects where we can weave Bitcoin into it. So it's a number of things. Maybe helping central banks do Bitcoin self-sovereign multi-sig cold storage. So all the cards are on the table right now. There's also an NFT marketplace in the works. Tell me about that. Yeah, so that's Veritoshi. It was launched a couple months back. It's uh, developed by Adam Saltis, the CTO of Coinos. But I want to take that over and put it under the Jan3 umbrella, invest more resources in it, and hopefully get more NFTs onto Liquid. And How would that like be different from what we're seeing in the Ethereum ecosystem? Or would it be different? Well, I think the Veritoshi community is much more organic, much like Bitcoin. It's just artists that want to make Bitcoin art. And one of the motivations for creating it in the first place is you have Bitcoin artists that don't want to use a shitcoin chain. So we want to let them use a Bitcoin sidechain. So I think it's important to grow that ecosystem. And I would like to have a tighter integration between Aqua and Veritoshi. So you can take your NFT art off of Veritoshi, put it in your Aqua wallet, and then you can display it and move it around. Now, a lot of folks know you from the former CSO of Blockstream and Adam Back. Can you reflect on your time Blockstream and, and why you're transitioning to this? Because this seems like, a bit, is it an offshoot of Blockstream? Because it seems like you're still tied to yeah. Blockstream. Well, I think we're still very much friends and you know, Adam is a really good friend of mine and I will always have a strong relationship. But Gen 3's focus is really to get Bitcoin into the hands of more people. So we want to focus on mass adoption and just getting more users and using technology that Blockstream has built. Because I really believe in what Blockstream has been doing and will be doing. And it's a critical piece of the ecosystem. Blockstream is a Bitcoin infrastructure company. It has satellites in space. You know, we're always going to be working together as allies on the bigger mission. One of the bigger missions is work in El Salvador. And I understand you're already doing some work there with Jan3 or some things in the works? Yeah, so when I was establishing Jan3, I reached out to the government and President Bukele's team and I said, I'm building this company. I would like to work together with you and help you build the software layer or the digital infrastructure for El Salvador and Bitcoin City. And they were interested. So we signed an MOU saying that we'll work together on building a future. Because as they want to bring Bitcoiners to El Salvador, they're going to need a lot of things. An immigration portal, a company setup portal where people can come and set up their businesses and domicile them in Bitcoin City. So these are all pieces of the puzzle, I think, to accelerate Bitcoinization in El Salvador. And that's part of our mission. Any other governments you're working with? I mean, here at BTC Miami, we learned that autonomous regions in Portugal, as well as Honduras, are going to expand Bitcoin adoption in their own ways. So are you talking to governments, other governments yourself? Yeah, so I was on stage with uh, President Albuquerque um, of Madeira. And we are also going to be working together to roll out Bitcoin in Madeira. That's the autonomous region of Portugal. And I believe that's a key region. It's a toehold into the EU. And I think a lot of people have identified the significance of that. But what we need to do is find out what the next steps are. So he said, we are embracing Bitcoin. We are adopting Bitcoin. And now it's time to do the concrete next steps of getting Bitcoin into Madeira. Interesting. I wonder what you see as the future of uh, the Bitcoin community as we see Bitcoin dominance uh, retreating a bit and other ecosystems in the crypto industry rising. Well, Bitcoin dominance is a uh, red herring. It's something that the altcoins like to talk about to show that they are important. But Bitcoin is in a league in, in and of itself. It's not comparable to any altcoin. So I don't really look at dominance as a meaningful metric in any way. Another big theme here is that uh, Jack Mullers from Strike announced that they are partnering with Shopify and uh, 
other point of sale and payments uh, companies. Yeah. So we're seeing, and he said that they're bringing Bitcoin back to its roots in payments. And then on the other hand, we've had this huge narrative that Bitcoin is a store of value. Michael Saylor is saying, you know, don't sell your Bitcoin. Yet <laughs> people are saying, no, use it as payment. So I, I wonder how you resolve that dichotomy. Well, Bitcoin is everything. I've been saying this for some time. So money is a store of value. Uh, medium of exchange and a unit of account. And Bitcoin is all of those things and it can evolve on all three fronts simultaneously. So with the Lightning Network, it is a medium of exchange and it is a unit of account at the SATS level. And you have Bitcoin at the Bitcoin level, which is the store of value. So it can do all things. It's digital gold. It has new properties where you can effectively teleport gold instantly across the world. So of course it can evolve on three fronts simultaneously. Now, what Jack is doing is very important, I think. I predicted this five years ago, almost five years ago, four years ago, in 2018. I said, we'll have mass adoption of Lightning in five years when a point of sale terminal integrates Lightning payments. And we just heard that yesterday. So I see it's all coming to pass. Okay, interesting. Uh, is, okay, we're gonna wrap it up, but is Adam back? Does he know who Satoshi is? <laughs> I don't know, some people say Adam is Satoshi, but... Uh, I don't think Satoshi is anyone that we see around here. Satoshi has excellent OPSEC and he's just uh, watching things from afar. <laughs>